Good morning. If you will stand and join with us and sing Victory in Jesus. Spirit, I'm 
Somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my lovings to him. He punched me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day i'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He punched me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. You may be seated. Good morning. It is so good to see each of you in God's house today, and we welcome you, hope that you will feel right at home. Didn't it feel good to sing this morning and to have the choir up here singing? Man, it's been a long time, but we are so thankful, and some of you, uh, this may be your first Sunday back in a long time, and we welcome you back. Uh, for those who join us online, we welcome you and encourage you to Continue to join us and to come be with us as you're able to. Um, there's so many exciting things happening and some new things coming up, and I want to just make you aware of a couple of them. Um, we're we're going to begin a new ministry for those who have crafty hands, those who like to sew. If you like to sew, I want you to, to be in prayer about a new ministry we're going to begin. And even if you can't sew, you can help with this. And we're going to be getting you a lot more information about this. But you can talk to Miss Debbie Dibble. And she will help you um, to, to tell you more about the, the ministry uh, that will involve some sewing. And also the items that we're going to need to uh, make some some bibs and, and memory pillows and, and throws for people in need. So that's going to be an exciting new ministry and one that even if you can't sew, you can help provide the items that we need. You, and you can learn to sew. She'll teach you how to sew. And if you have a sewing machine, she's going she's gonna to want you to bring that if you're able to and, and, and be a part of that ministry. Um. We have some other things we're, we're hoping to start with a, a cancer care ministry for, for patients, survivors, for, for caregivers, um, and anyone who supports those who have or uh, have had cancer or been affected by cancer, which is pretty much all of us, and uh, that'll be coming up real soon. We'll hear more about that as well. I want to just share with you a couple of... Uh, prayer concerns this morning. We want to pray for Crystal Ward, who is in the hospital, and um, I understand was transferred to Duke. I know last I heard last night, she was still waiting for a bed, but someone said that they thought they had a bed for her, and we're going to be moving her on to Duke from Moore County. Uh, she's still having some bleeding issues, and we want to continue to lift her up. And also for Kenny Simmons, who was in an accident this morning, but I understand it's going to be okay. It was just banged up pretty bad. But uh, we want to lift him and his family up as well. So um, I know there are others. We want to continue to pray for all of those that we have on our list of prayer concerns and others in our hearts. Let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Almighty God, we are so thankful 
for another day of life. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be in your house. And Lord, we just pray that, that you would receive all the glory and all the praise and all the honor for everything that takes place in this service today. We're here to worship you. And Father, we, we lift up to you these concerns. These who are, are sick, those who are on our prayer list, Lord, there are many who are shut-ins. There are some who are, who are facing surgeries or in need of surgery in the days ahead. There are others, Lord, who, who are recovering from procedures, from sickness. Father, there are those who are grieving the death of a loved one. Others, Lord, who are like Crystal, who are in the hospital and, and in need of answers or condition, solutions, or problems. Lord, we, we pray not only for her, but for her family as well. Her mom and dad especially. That you would be with them. Lord, we pray for Kenny and his family. That we thank you, Lord, that he was not seriously injured this morning. And Father, we just pray that you would continue to keep your hand protection upon those who are traveling, those who are, who are out working. Lord, we love you and we thank you for loving us. We don't deserve what you've done for us. We don't deserve the forgiveness you've given us. Lord, we thank you for it and we pray that you would help us to be more loving and more forgiving because you have loved us. You have forgiven us. You have shown us grace. Father, we thank you for our choir and for those who, who have worked with it. And Lord, it's been a long time since they've been able to stand up here and sing, and we just praise you for that this morning, Lord. We pray that you would continue to, to be with each of them as they prepare to lead us in worship. We thank you for our praise team that has been with us for so long now without a choir. And they, they have helped to lead us for, for Logan and Lord for Janie, allowing her to be back to play for the Hattinger family and their, their contributions through music. For those who run the sound, those who do the broadcasting, there's so much that goes into the service, Lord, but the most important part is that we connect with you. And that's what we want to do right now, Lord. So speak to us. Give us clear minds and hearts to hear what you want to say. May we respond in a way that pleases you. Lord, we praise you. We thank you. We make our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Join us as we sing No Longer Slaves. You can stand and sing. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. 
Your love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Amen. Thank you all for that good singing this morning. This time we want to let our kids who would like to go out, children, if you'd like to go to Children's Church, you can be dismissed at this time to go out with Miss Carmen. All right. A good looking group this morning. How many made it to in-person Sunday school this morning? Good, good. What a wonderful, wonderful time that was. If you're not in a Sunday school class, you're missing a real blessing. Um, and, and many of the classes were still able to, to stream. And we thought we were doing that. I, I thought I was. I spent about 10 minutes getting it all. Thought I had it all. At the end of the service, I, and in, in the Sunday school, I said, well, I, I, I don't know if that worked or not. And I looked at it. And there was a big light there that said, start video. <laughs> so if you're in my class and you weren't able to, to see us this morning, it's my fault. Um, it, it just helps me understand why I'm so thankful for our technological people who keep us going. Um, wow. We thank you so much for all you do. Well, this morning, we're going to look at Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. I'm going to read verses 1 through 11, and I'll invite you as you're able to to stand with me in honor of the reading of God's Word. Luke 5, beginning with verse 1. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the Word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. 
when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. Their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they have taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. May God add his blessing to this reading of his word. You may be seated. Have you ever found that your dreams and human failure just collided head on? I think that's probably happened to all of us. If it hasn't, be patient because it will happen. See, it's not to say that every human fails miserably all the time. That's not what I'm trying to say. But it is to say that in some way, big or small, we all, we all face failure at some point in our lives. And having said that, I would like to add that we should understand that we have all failed when it comes to keeping the standards God intended for mankind. We're all born with a sin nature. The Bible tells us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Perhaps you've had more than your share of failures. A lot of people fail in their marriages. Many people fail or feel like they have failed as parents or even as children. Others fail in their education or they fail in business. And I know I've said this before, but it bears repeating over and over again. What we as Christians must realize is that our God is a God of second chances. That's good news, folks. We serve a God who is a God of second chances. Many times he allows us to simply try again. The problem some of us have, though, is we don't understand that while God allows us second chances. We must allow others second chances as well. We must be willing to forgive. I hope you're listening to me, child of God. If the creator of the universe, the one who gives all life, the sovereign king of kings and lord of lords, is willing to forgive us our failures, and allow us a second chance, then we ourselves must be willing to forgive others. We must be willing to allow others a second chance. And I say that not to offend anyone, but to remind us that while we sing amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And while we sing surely goodness, and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. We must be willing 
to show other people that same grace and mercy that we're singing about, that we have received ourselves. See, the last time I checked my Bible, and it hasn't changed, God is still on the throne. Jesus is still at his right hand. And that means that you and I do not have the authority to judge anyone. That job belongs to him and him alone. We are not the judge. Now from our text this morning, we find a passage that's very familiar. We read Luke's account, the calling of the first disciples. The reason I've chosen this passage is because I believe it illustrates three very important truths to us today. First of all, it It re-emphasizes an important truth that makes the Bible believable. Secondly, it teaches us that failure is only a prelude to success. And third, it reminds us that the greatest success is obedience to the one who knows us best. So let's consider the one thing that makes the Bible believable. If anyone ever gives you an argument that the Bible isn't believable, here's one thing that they cannot argue. You ever notice how real our heroes of the Bible are? Well, they did extraordinary things. They were extraordinary people. But have you ever noticed that despite all their greatness, their Their flaws are visible for us to see. They all have their own human flaws. And one of the greatest reasons this is so significant is that you and I can relate to that, can't we? We have a lot of flaws. As human beings, we can't help but have flaws. We all have our weaknesses. See, if a human had written the Bible, rather than God who inspired humans to write down the words, if a human had written the Bible, don't you think that he or she would have chosen to cover up all those failings, all of those weaknesses? I mean, that's what we tend to do, isn't it? We want to cover up our weaknesses, our human failures. For instance, a human author would have hidden King David's hideous sins of adultery and murder. After all, David was a man after God's own heart. He was a hero. He was the king whom God had chosen. He was the line from which the Messiah would come. But he wasn't a perfect man. He was a human, and he had failures like you and me. God used David in mighty ways. God loved David in spite of his sin. And think about the closest group of disciples our Lord had. Peter and James and John. One would expect that the choicest of disciples would be presented as as faultless, as successful. Not as someone who would deny Jesus three times just before he was crucified. Who would who would do such things as lash out in anger and chop someone's ear off. Or two brothers who were so rough and burly they were known as the sons of thunder. But these are the men whose faults and failures are most pronounced in the New Testament. Think about all the times we read about them. In Matthew 16, Jesus said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. Peter. In the ninth chapter of Luke, Jesus rebuked James and John when they wanted heavenly fire to descend upon an 
inhospitable Samaritan village. They weren't nice to us, just destroy them. We all know Jesus denied Jesus, was denied by Peter three times. Two of Christ's disciples failed to heal a desperately needy boy. These very three in the inner circle. They had just had the most glorious experience of being with Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration. They had even seen Moses and Elijah, who were long dead. Yet they failed God in the valley of human suffering. After Jesus healed the boy, He told them that they had failed because they did not have enough faith. Now at the very beginning of their ministry, the three who were closest to Jesus experienced failure in the very vocation which they were supposed to be experts. Fishing. They fished all night. No success. You would think that Jesus would allow them to, to start their ministry with tremendous success at what they did best. He pump up their ego a little bit, but he didn't. He wanted to show them right from the start that without him, they could do nothing. That without him, they couldn't even succeed in their chosen profession. Understand that these men didn't simply fish because they loved to fish. They were fishermen. This was their livelihood. No fish meant no money. No money meant no way to survive. And fishing is a very risky and and often very dangerous profession. These men were, were professionals in every sense of the word. They didn't fish to win fishing tournaments. They fished in order to survive in order to provide for family, for their community. But without Jesus, they found they couldn't even do that. If you'll remember, John records another instance in which our Lord permitted these same three, himself included, with others at the very end of Jesus' earthly ministry, After the resurrection, he permitted them to to experience failure again at at fishing. Jesus came along and he told them to cast their net on the other side of the boat. They did. They were obedient and they caught so many fish that their nets broke. After that, Jesus singled out Peter, reaffirmed him, as a disciple, even though he had denied him three times. The Bible is indeed the Word of God. And we're in church, I don't think anyone's going to argue. The Bible is the Word of God. If the men who wrote the words had done so by their own inspiration, I feel certain they would have sugarcoated their own failures at the very least. Instead, we have the divinely inspired word of the living God, recorded by human hand, yet breathed by God himself. And it's believable if for no other reason, because it exposes the failures and the weaknesses of God's greatest heroes. I'm very glad it does. That makes it easier for me to accept God's forgiveness when I see what He has forgiven so many others for and how He continued to use them or use them in some great way after they had been reinstated. 
It makes it easier to accept God's forgiveness. For us to forgive ourselves for our own failures and weaknesses makes the Bible believable. Secondly, failure is only a prelude to success. The three disciples here in our text, they failed. Only to realize their utter and complete dependence upon the Lord Jesus. See, sometimes our failure is His way of gaining our complete dependence upon Him, explicitly and unquestionably. We need Him. We can't do it on our own. Sometimes He reminds us of that. When we get cocky and start to do things on our own, start to feel like we don't need Him, He'll remind us. A fact of life is that none of us can always succeed at what we do best. Tiger Woods didn't win every golf tournament. Richard Petty didn't win every race. You and I won't always succeed at what we do best. See, if we did, you know what would happen? We'd have to die. Here's why. We would be so impossible to live with, somebody would kill us. They wouldn't be able to stand it. Maybe a spouse. But somebody would kill us. We'd be impossible to live with if we want everything. If we always succeeded. Now we may succeed at some goal we have. That may not be God's goal. Might be a goal we set, not His goal for us. When that happens, we probably find ourselves miserable even in our success. I had a man tell me one time, he was a very successful race car driver. He said, I started out racing go-karts. He said, I was born with everything a man could want. My family had money. They provided everything I needed. And I would go and race those go-karts, and every time I won, there was something more I wanted to win, something greater. A bigger prize. A greater challenge. And so I'd go and pursue that and I would, I would overcome and I would win. He said, finally, the ultimate came. The world champion go-kart racer. He said, I won that. And I went home and I was the most miserable man on earth. I said, what else is there? He said, that's when somebody told me about Jesus. Somebody told me about Jesus. And I learned that these earthly victories don't mean anything. And he trusted Christ as a Savior. Failure is only a prelude to success. We're not always going to win and and if we did, we would be miserable even in our success if we were outside of the will of God. On the other hand, God has a plan for each of us. He has a plan for you today. There's something that He can do to help us change directions. Sometimes He causes us to fail in order to change our directions, in order for us to follow Him and become obedient. Because He's chosen what's best for us. And even when we think we have, we don't always make the best decisions. Think about these disciples. They were surviving as fishermen, but God had other plans for them. In order to show them what he had for them to do, they had to experience 
the failure of not doing well what they were supposedly good at. And once they experienced that failure, God showed them through Jesus how to be successful when they were in His plan, when He was in the boat with them, when He was in charge. And so I ask you this morning, is He in the boat with you? Is He in charge? Is He directing where you cast your nets? Are you being obedient to Him? I know a man who spent many years working for a major enterprise. He was successful. He had accumulated great wealth and even had his own business as well. He made all the money he needed and much more for his family. But this was not God's plan for his life. You see, at an early age, he rejected God's call on his life into the ministry. One day, just a few months from retirement, he was laid off. He never got his job back. He never got full pension. The good news is, he realized the failure was part of God's plan. God got his attention. And he went to school. And he studied and became a pastor. Became a very good and successful pastor in a local church. Not making a fraction of what he had made a few years before. He became a good pastor. More importantly, he was obedient. He was right in the middle of God's plan for his life. And he's happier more now than ever before. Sometimes God does allow us to fail in order to change our direction. In order for us to, to see that we have to become part of the program that he has planned for us all along. On the other hand, sometimes our choice and God's choice will coincide. And when that happens, God may permit success. But remember, He somehow has a way of, of shattering self-confidence by permitting an occasional failure. So we don't get too big-headed and somebody have to kill us for it. He doesn't do that because he's mean. He does it because he loves us and he knows us. And he wants us to remember that he is the author of our success. He is the one who must come first. So instead of complaining at failure, we need to see it as possibly God's hand at work directing us amidst our failure. Finally, this morning, the greatest success is obedience, the one who knows best. Listen again to verses 4 and 5. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And if you skip down to verse 11, so when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and they followed him. These disciples experienced failure at the beginning of their ministry and also at the end of their ministries. But they ended up with unimagined victory because of their obedience to Christ. They didn't argue. They simply did what he told them to do. Had they argued, had they delayed that day, they might have missed altogether the opportunity to serve the Lord Jesus. To know Him in ways that others would never get to know Him. 
know, sometimes I think we tend to strive for greatness, even in, in our ministry efforts. We may have our priorities in life straight. We may be close to the Lord in our daily walk. We may be serving Him in all that we do. But you know, when our goal is greatness, notoriety, be known as the such and such a church, that may not necessarily be His goal for us. Remember His final instructions that Jesus gave to Peter before He ascended? In the Gospel of John, Jesus said to Peter, Take care of my lambs. Take care of my sheep. Feed my sheep. Now this is just before he ascends back to heaven. Until the second coming. And the most important thing he could tell his minister was to take care of his people. It was right after he asked Peter three times, Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And each time, yes, 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 Lord, you know I love you. And take care of my lambs, my sheep. In other words, feed them physically and spiritually. And that's what we are to do if we truly love him not to gain notoriety, popularity. We are to minister. He didn't say become well known, become famous, become popular. But he did say humble yourself. Take care my sheep. Take care my lambs. You know, there are a lot of herding lambs and sheep in our world today. A lot of people who need forgiveness. A lot of people who need acceptance. And each of us is prone to failure. We must be willing to forgive each other. We must be willing to forgive each other. We must be willing to affirm one another. We must be willing to accept the downtrodden. We must be willing to include the unwanted. I don't think there's anything in the Bible that encourages us to have cliques within the church. There's nothing there that encourages us to shut people out. To discourage people. To make them feel like they're unworthy. No, it's all about including and loving people. That's what God wants for us. That's what he wants us to show to others. To love them. To include them. To feed his lambs. To take care of his sheep. People like to say things like, but people have to prove themselves before we can trust them. Well, I agree that people have to be held accountable for their actions. But I also believe that we must be very wise when we ask people to serve in the local church. We should match people's spiritual gifts with the jobs that we ask them to do and make them accountable for what they agree to do. It just tickled me to see these folks standing up here singing this morning. But you know what? There are others. There are others. You know who you are. God's gifted you 
with the ability to sing. And you're not using that gift. You need to be up there with them. Talk to Logan. He'll find you a place. There are others who need to be singing with the praise team or, or need to be sharing solos, duets. I'm just not comfortable. If God's gifted you with that, use it or lose it. Use it, friends. Use it. Allow God to use it. We need to match people's spiritual gifts with the jobs we ask them to do. We can't ask people to do things for which they're not equipped. It's not fair. It's not fair to them. It's not fair to the people who are equipped to do it. But we must be careful not to hold people's faults and, and past failures against them in such a way that we prevent them from following God's plan for their lives today. See, our greatest success is born out of our obedience to Christ. If you wanted to write something down, that would be it. Our greatest success is born out of our obedience to Christ. No matter what battles we lose, the presence of Christ guarantees ultimate victory for the child of God. You failed in life? We all have. God says, try again. Try again. But this time, listen to the one who knows you best. Don't give him an argument that's there's no use in trying again. If someone you know is trying out of obedience, don't do anything that would, would dampen their spirits, that would cause them to stumble. You know, you and I should never be a hurdle that someone has to jump over when they're following Jesus. Instead, we should be encouraging one another, helping each other along the way as we all strive to be successful. And the definition of success would be obeying our Master, the Lord Jesus. With heads bowed and eyes closed this morning. Have you failed? Have you failed recently? Are you feeling sorry for yourself? Are you feeling defeated? There's good news. You can try again. Our God's a God of second chances. Maybe you need to come. Kneel at this altar. And pour out your heart to Him this morning. Maybe you need to make a public rededication. Maybe you need to trust Christ first time you've never you've never made a profession of faith you don't have to be perfect perfect people aren't allowed here maybe God's brought you here to serve he wants to use your gifts here at this church our doors are open to you maybe you just need someone to pray with you Whatever need you may have this morning, I want to encourage you to come. In just a moment. We're going to sing. Yeah, I said sing. A hymn of decision. I'm going to invite you to stand. And when you do, I'm going to give you the opportunity as we sing to come. Make things right with God. Whatever need you may have. Heavenly Father, as your Holy Spirit continues to speak to us and, and move us to be obedient. May we have the courage to accept your forgiveness and to try again. May we be willing to forgive others and allow them a second chance. We make our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever your need this morning, you come. Let's stand as we sing. I have decided to follow Jesus.
decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. No turning back, no turning back. I cross out carry till I see Jesus. I cross out carry till I see Jesus. I cross out carry till I see Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. I want to thank you for being here today, for your attention and your participation in worship, as well as our Sunday school hour this morning. If you didn't make it to Sunday school, I encourage you to come out next week. Wednesday night, we'll be right here again, right here at 7 o'clock as we continue our study on relationships. Uh, that'll be right here in the sanctuary, 7 p.m. Our children and youth will have their mission groups going on as well. I want to invite Pastor Jason to come up here. And before he shares the announcements, I want to say that today we congratulate Pastor Jason on nine years of service at Robert Dale Baptist Church. And I would say... I would say that is nine years of faithful and dedicated and loyal service, and we appreciate you. I appreciate you very much. Thank you for your service, brother. We love you. Nine years, I would have said at least 15. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> no, it's been good. Thank you all uh, so much. It's, it's, it is a pleasure being here and worshiping and working with you all. We just pray for God's direction in that and just continue to many, many, many more years together. Uh, we do have things coming up. We do have our summer program going to be starting up this week. Uh, that will be on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, so uh, we are excited that this is a, a program we can keep going on. If you uh, want to help in any way with that or you have a, uh, know of a child that would benefit from that, uh, you can contact uh, the church, uh, get a hold of Randy. That's the best person to get a hold uh, on that. Uh, if you can't, you can uh, contact our office or any one of us. We'll be glad to help you out. And we just look forward to that and the uh, things that that's going to bring uh, to our church. Uh, many other things happening. Our Sunday school classes are starting to meet back here. We do offer some of those offer still online for those that are listening online uh, this morning. And uh, we just uh, want to... Uh, say we are excited for this. We almost have, we're close to 60 in our Sunday school classes this morning, and uh, I believe we're right at that 100, 100 mark of people being here in the service in person today, and uh, we had quite a bit joining us online, so uh, we, we just uh, welcome everyone. It's, it's great to see y'all and be able to worship with you this morning. Uh, our, our newsletters are out. Some of you have been missing those. Some of you don't get them on Facebook. They are posted on our, our Facebook but we do have copies around. Get those. Our calendars are up to date. Uh, we're trying to keep things up to date as best we can. Our fellowship hall calendar is on the wall out here uh, with more information on our information board. So um, uh, utilize these uh, for information for you to remember the events that are coming up. All right. Well, thank you all again for being here. And we'll uh, dismiss with a word of prayer. Father God, thank you so much for what you do. Lord, uh, we just thank you. Uh, that you provide a place for us to come together, God. Lord, uh, Lord, that we can feel safe coming here, not just uh, for health reasons, Lord, but this is supposed to be a place of sanctuary where we can let our guard down to let you speak to us personally, to 
uh, allow each other to, to lift up each other in prayer and, and encourage one another. Lord, uh, we know we have faults and failures, but Lord, uh, we just trust in you to, to help lifting us up and keep us strong and be able to keep moving forward, Lord. Lord, we do ask forgiveness where we have failed you and just uh, pray, God, that you'll just uh, show us the path that would uh, lead us to uh, a, a closer walk with you and, Lord, one that is, is honoring to you. Lord, we have many that are sick. We want to uh, just uh, lift these up to you, Lord. We have homebound, Lord, people that uh, are just uh, need a special touch from you, Lord. We just pray you just be with each and every one of them. Lord, uh, for uh, men, we want to remember Crystal uh, to you this morning in a special way. Lord, just uh, give these doctors wisdom and guidance in, in uh, helping her physically, God. But, Lord, we just pray you just uh, you, you intervene as, as you see fit there and just help her out, Lord. Lord, uh, I know we have uh, others. Uh, Lord, we want to remember uh, Kenny this morning and just uh, pray you just uh, be with him. And, Lord, we pray for... The many others that are, that are traveling and, and doing things, Lord, and starting their summer, uh, we just uh, we just pray just to uh, uh, protect these that are traveling around. Lord, as we get ready to go, may uh, all that we say and do uh, bring honor and glory to your name. And again, thank you for what you do for us. And we ask this in your name. Amen.